Hello, this is David Gilmore, known as LDS Prepper, and to watch over 600 videos in preparedness that could save you time, money, and effort, go to LDSPrepper.com. Today I'm going to show you three easy ways to set up portable solar panels. I'm out here on my front lawn, and I've got four of the Mango Power 200 watt portable solar panels set up here. And these are incredibly high quality, durable, uh, lightweight solar panels. As you can see here, this is the nice carrying case. It's about two feet by two feet. These panels are very lightweight. You fold them up and they fit inside those carrying cases. Those who have come to LDSPrepperStore.com and purchased their Mango Power Systems, a lot of them, probably 90% or more, have gotten these portable solar panels. So I wanted to take a minute and show you how to set these up quickly and easily and some other options in setting them up. Right now, I have four panels set up. That gives me 800 total watts. I have these set as far apart as I can possibly set them with the wiring that comes with them. I'm in Idaho, it's winter. Today it's overcast so you can't really tell, but I set these up earlier a few days ago and watch for the shadow. And there is plenty enough cable here that comes with the solar panels that you do not need any extra cabling. These panels in, uh, are made to set up in this configuration, one in front of the other, but there's enough space in between that the panel in front will not shadow the panel behind. I'm in winter, so the sun is at its lowest in the horizon and still being very far north and the sun very far uh, down in the horizon, I did not have any shadowing. So in my opinion, you don't need any extra cabling to connect these together. These four panels connected here take up 20 feet of space on my lawn. Each panel comes with a negative and a positive cable. Well, you're going to set these up in series. So you're going to connect the positive to negative. And there's only one way to do it. You cannot do it wrong. It's easy to do. Then you're going to go to the next one. That cable, which is negative, is already taken up. So we'll take the next positive and go to the negative and just keep that string going. One thing that I really, really like about the mango is that you can get 2,000 watts of input power per hour to recharge the mango. So it's a very fast charging power station or battery backup system. If for some reason you haven't seen my full review and application of the Mango Power E station, click the link below this video in the description to watch that video. So with these four solar panels in a chain, and if I wanted to use these 800 watts of solar power, how would I connect it to the Mango Power E? Well, my solar panels are outside and my Mango Power E is inside the house in the living room. So all I need to do is get a cable and connect the solar panels from outside to the Mango inside the house. Well, remember we've got a positive and negative cable on each solar panel. We've already used the one end to connect the panels in series. So I've got another end here. All I need to do is get an extension. This is an MC4 extension cable. I have these at LDSPrepperStore.com in 50 foot and 100 foot lengths. And you're simply going to connect one end of the extension cable to the other end of the solar panel. And you got that leg connected. It doesn't really make any difference, but to make things simple, I've got my black wire, which is typically designates negative, to the negative cable on my first panel. And then I'm going to go down to the last panel in the row and connect my positive red wire to the wire from the last panel. Once you have the red and black extension wires connected, one to the first panel and one to the last panel, you're going to run them into the house. Here for demonstrations, I'm just running it through the door. But in a grid down situation, you may just run it through the window or have a more of a permanent solution where you go through the wall. I now line up the white dot on the Mango solar panel connection cable to the white dot on the connection on the side of the Mango E. Plug it in and twist and lock it in. The final step is connecting the red wire to the red wire and the black to the black and you're charging your Mango Power E. 
And that's it. So you're automatically charging your Mango Power E with 800 watts of solar power. Let's say instead of having one row of four, you wanted two rows of four or two rows of five or two rows of two. You still only need one red and one black extension cable going to the Mango. But you need to combine this row with that row. All you do is you pick up this Y connection. It comes as a pair for positive and negative at LDSPrepperStore.com. You connect it to this row over here, and then you have another cable going over to that over there. And the same thing at the end of the row. You'd have a connection cable here going over to that one over there. And then you'd have your red extension cable going from here to the mango and your black extension cable going from here to the mango. The third option is to build a rack and I'll show you details on how to build that at the end of this video. Just lean this against your south facing wall on your house or your building. You simply connect the cables leaving the bottom cables on the bottom panels ready to connect to your extension cables that run to the Mango Power E. Connect the other cables, positive or negative, and simply take those connected cables and tuck them out of the way. To build the solar panel frame that leans against the house without the legs, all you need is four pieces of 2x4 that are 8 feet long. Take three of those pieces and cut them 7 feet long. And one of those pieces cut it in half so it's 48 inches or 4 feet long. I pre-drill the holes on both sides and on both ends. Lay out your lumber. I like to have mine sitting up on these little scrap pieces of lumber because it's easier for me to get the drill in. You want to have the top one squared off to the top, then the top of the center one 21 inches, and the top of the bottom horizontal 42 inches. I'm using three inch exterior screws because that's what I have. And I'm using just straight two by four untreated lumber because this is just a temporary setup. It will not be permanently mounted outside and we're not putting this underground. This top horizontal lumber needs to be at the top of the vertical lumber here. But I know when I put the screw in, it's gonna walk. So I typically start about a half inch uh, below where I want to end up. And then as I screw it in, I adjust it so it ends up square. I'll do the same for these others here. Typically start off about a half inch off and screw it in and the board will move up to the line. Now that you have everything screwed in and secure, it's time to lay on the solar panels so that you can know where to put the support screws. This down here where the uh, horizontal bottom 2x4 does not come all the way to the ground is the feet. So I'm going to come up to the top. I measured two inches down and two inches in, and that's where I'm going to put my support screw. I'm using one and five eighths inch exterior screws because that's what works and that's what I have. Once I have my first screw in and centered into the middle of the hole, I lay out the solar panel. And then on the opposite side, top right corner of the solar panel, I measured two inches down from the top. Made sure that that mark is in the center of my hole. And then I just take my awl and punch a hole in the center here for my support screw. Then the same thing on the bottom on both sides. Then I just put in my support screw. Once I have all four of my support screws in, I laid the solar panel down. I also laid my second solar panel down. I take my top solar panel and push it all the way down so the screw is at the top of the grommet hole. And then I take my awl and I mark a hole for my screw in the center of this here, which will give me half an inch drop. So there'll be a half an inch between the two solar panels once this is set in and slides down. If you want to make this freestanding so it doesn't have to lean up against the building, you just need to add some legs. Take another 2x4 that's 8 feet long, cut it in half for your legs. Lay the board so it touches the top of the rack and attach the hinge. 
I'm using four inch strap hinges. Once you have both legs attached, flip them over on the base, cut another eight foot long two by four to seven feet and lay it on top of the center support of the base. And then using the three inch screws like you did before, go ahead and put them in and screw in the horizontal brace. You now have a freestanding solar panel rack. Connect the cables like on the racks that leaned against the building, positive to negative, leaving the two wires down below open for your extension cable going to the mango. And there you have your freestanding 800 watts worth of solar panels with a very small footprint and a very sturdy mount that can be adjusted for different angles during the season. To get the extension cables for either option one, two, or three, go to LDSPrepperStore.com. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. If you haven't already, make sure you watch my full review of the hands down best power station on the market at any price, the Mango Power E, by clicking the link below this video.